So help you God. So help me God. America's political landscape changed dramatically after the 1980 election. Government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. A charismatic Ronald Reagan took the country to the right. President of the United States. The popularity of the new president and his conservative philosophy soon made liberal a label many Democrats ran away from. but not Ted Kennedy. We will restore the guiding value of American progress that we must advance, not by climbing over each other, but by bringing everyone along. More and more, Kennedy wanted to bring everyone along by working in the Senate. We'll, uh, we'll come to order. Not running for the White House. I have in uh, my hands uh, here a bill. He was more comfortable with the legislative process than he ever might have been in the executive branch. This, is this known as a stakeout? Is that Still, is? whether he liked it or not... Could you uh, just talk, to, talk to us a little bit about your exploratory committee? The public and the media saw Kennedy first and foremost as a presidential candidate. What is your position? I've indicated I would not be a candidate for president or vice president, would not accept a draft. <laughs> Finally, Kennedy broke a long family tradition. For the first time in decades, no Kennedy would figure in a presidential race. I'm interested in the pursuit of public service, not just the pursuit of the presidency, and I'm well satisfied with this uh, decision. Democrats and the Kennedy family had long seen the White House as Ted Kennedy's destiny, but the senator chose a different path. In your family, the presidency was kind of the, the mark. Hmm. Do you ever say, well, I didn't reach the mark? Oh, no. I mean, there was, I ran for president. I wanted to be president. Uh, and that was not in the cards. And now my, uh, my career is in the Senate, and I'm, I uh, enjoy it. And uh, I'm just about getting the hang of it. <laughs> On issues from apartheid in South Africa to health care to women's rights, Kennedy led the liberal fight in the Senate. But his most dramatic battle came over the nomination of conservative Robert Bork to the Supreme Court in 1987. We're fortunate to be able to draw upon such an impressive legal mind. Kennedy didn't use the traditional tactic of challenging Bork's competence or ethics. Instead, the Senate rejected Bork's nomination after Kennedy attacked his political ideology head on. Robert Bork's America is a land in which women would be forced into back alley abortions. Blacks would sit at segregated lunch counters. But while Kennedy loudly supported liberal causes, it is a putting at serious risk the well-being, the health and safety of work. He quietly courted conservatives. And he realized that in order to move his legislation forward, especially when the Republicans were in control, was to go get a real conservative Republican, woo him, win him, compromise with him, jointly sponsored the legislation and move it forward that way. <laughs> one of his unlikely allies was Utah Senator Orrin Hatch, one of the most conservative members of the Senate. I've been getting through to this man, I'm telling you. <laughs> Unfortunately, the conservatives think he's getting through to me. You know, the, as they say, there's a time to hold them and a time to fold them, and there's a time to try and compromise. Compromise uh, shouldn't be considered a dirty word. When you get the ball, you run that way, all right? Can you run that way as fast as you can? But there were no compromises for Kennedy as far as his extended family, a family that included his own children as well as the sons and daughters of John and Robert Kennedy. Teddy. Yes. Teddy calls every one of us on our birthday. And if I call Teddy, I'll be talking to him within a half an hour, no matter where he is in the world. He always makes us feel like we're in first place. I think the thing that really sets him apart from anybody is his huge heart. And he is just there for all of us all the time. He has been really for my whole life. In 1973, Teddy Jr., who was then 12, was diagnosed with cancer in his right leg. Doctors said it had to be amputated. At the same time, 
niece Kathleen Kennedy was planning her wedding. Kennedy told CBS correspondent Ed Bradley he needed to be with all his family in sickness and in health. So I was over with Teddy when he went into the uh, operating room and then went to church, gave Kathleen away, and then came back, uh, was there when Teddy came out of it. And you felt it your responsibility to be in both places? Both places. I mean, it was the natural thing to, uh, to do. I wouldn't have missed either one of them. It's a very bittersweet day. We all sang When Irish Eyes Are Smiling as the last song of her wedding program. And people were kind of crying at the same time. As the years passed, Kennedy took special pride in the way Teddy Jr. dealt with his handicap. This is my son, uh, Teddy, racing. He lost his leg to cancer, and he still raced the handicap skiers race. And uh, it just says, favorite to dad, it was taught me, I could always be a winner. But while Ted Kennedy was keeping his extended family and his career together, his personal life was falling apart. His life as a senator, senator Hart, returning your call. Yeah. was very disciplined, very focused, and very productive. Yeah, Gary, uh, listen, we approve. But his private things. life was just the opposite chaotic, uh, without discipline, and I never quite understood how those two uh, lived in the same body. Kennedy's long troubled marriage to Joan ended in divorce in 1982, and his private life began attracting less than flattering attention in the media. He was spiraling out of control with drinking and womanizing, at least that was the reputation. It was not the ideal reputation for a surrogate father of a generation of Kennedys. Do you ever feel that sometimes that, that you've set the wrong example for these kids? Well, I think uh, the, I have made uh, mistakes and, I, and uh, I've acknowledged them. Um, and uh, I've tried to learn from them. And I think I have. And you think they've learned from your mistakes? Oh, I think they've learned from, uh, they learn from mistakes, both their own and I imagine from from mine and, uh, and from others as well. But Kennedy's private life became very public on Easter weekend 1991 in Palm Beach, Florida. A nephew of Massachusetts Senator Edward Kennedy denies that he is a suspect in an alleged rape at the family estate in Palm Beach, Florida. A night of bar hopping ended with Ted Kennedy's nephew, William Kennedy Smith, being charged with rape. I'm absolutely confident that uh, he will be vindicated. Teddy was involved because he had taken William Smith out drinking, as if Teddy was one of these young guys. I wish I'd gone for a long walk on the beach instead. Jury finds Smith the was acquitted. Count one, we find the defendant not guilty. But the lurid publicity left Kennedy devastated. That trial seems to have been a turning point. He came to some epiphany that he had to change. I saw him as very vulnerable, and I thought this is a time to get through to him. Senator Hatch said that after the trial, a depressed Kennedy turned to him for advice. So I said, Ted, you better grow up and quit acting like a teenager. And I said, you know what you've got to do, don't you? He said, what? I said, you've got to stop drinking. I don't know whether that was the first time it dawned on him, but it certainly came home to him there that he had to change. And to his credit, he has changed. And an even bigger change in Kennedy's life. Is this the wedding? This is my vow, yes. Was soon to come.